All right, guys, welcome back to the channel, Trading Simplified. Today, we're gonna to review on the Fidelity website. They have trading dashboard, which offers a lot to their customers. We're gonna break down charting. We're gonna break down making a watch list. Let's get right into it. So the first thing you're gonna do is click view your trading dashboard. So you're gonna see when you first click on trading dashboard that a chart comes up. Now there's a lot on this screen, so we're gonna break it down for newer investors. Right away, Tesla is the first thing that came up. The way to pick the individual stock is to go under this search bar right here, and you can click any stock that you'd want. We clicked INTC, which is Intel. You can do anything you want. We'll keep up Tesla for these purposes of the video, but now let's just break it down. So when you click on the search, you put Tesla up here, it's gonna show your, your actual price, a market, real market data right there. And then it's gonna show your bid, your ask, and the volume for the day currently. Now, let's go take a minute just to review the chart so you can see. On the chart here, you can click on 1D, which is one day, two day, five day, 10 day, and then the list goes on. So I'm gonna bring up basically just the five day chart. And then let's say you want to start doing some analysis. You can click on analysis. And this is what I like about Fidelity. If you click on analysis, it already gives you what Fidelity's opinion is. So they're showing our preference, long positions above 399 with targets to 435 and 450 in extension. Then they show the alternative. Below 399, they're looking for further downside to 343 and 360. And they also write comments next to it. You can also, under the analysis part, when you click it, it brings up this tab and you can click on the methodology as well if you want to review it in further detail. Next, let's say you want to you know, skip the analysis, you want to go to draw. You have plenty of options. You can draw channels, you can do call outs, you can do doodles. And I'm just going to break down a few of these just so you can see as a, as a trader that there are more options besides just looking at a blank you know, screen like this. So click on draw, you can do call outs. And what you do is when you click on call out, you can basically click where you want it. So 360 level, and then you click it again, and then you can write, you know, a note for yourself, like a little blurb. So I'll say, you know, buy some more shares less than 360. So I make a little note for myself. I click the check box and now I have this here on the side and I marked where it is, and you can move it around just by holding it. Because if you're a long-term buyer, you're dollar cost averaging in, it's another option where you can kind of set the mark where you want it. So I could put it right here. Next, going back to draw, you can draw trend channels. So you draw a channel, you click on channel, you can start from here, you click it once, and then you'll see that the line is extending, and then you click it again, and then you move it out and you can create the channel. So I'm going to show you one more time on how to do that. If you were going to create a channel, let's go to the five year to make this easier because so we'll do a different spot. So you're going to click on draw, click on channel. And let's say I wanted to click up here. I clicked once scrolling it down, right? I'm going like this, make it as long as I want, click one more time. And then you go up and down and then you can create this channel here just to delete it. You just put the, the, the delete button. That's it. So now moving forward, Let's go back to a more time frame that everybody can see for the video. Going back to the six month chart here, we've made the trend channel. I've, I wrote a note to buy more shares, less than 360. When it comes to this, there is plenty of options. You can scroll down. Now I don't normally use most of these, but sometimes I will use the rectangle. If I think like this is a support and resistance, I'll click and draw like a support and resistance level as well. So it just shows you there's different functionalities that you can use. So if you want to draw it out for yourself, you think maybe that this level is a support level and you want it to wait, you can move all of this around for yourself. Next, what I like is the feature is the compare. Let's say you want to compare the Tesla stock to the S&P 500. You can put an SPX and then you can press enter. And now you can actually compare it to what it's performing compared to that. So if we just went on a max chart here, Let's do like a five year chart so you can get a realistic view here. In a one year chart here, you can see that this, the S&P 500 is up 18% in one year versus you can see that Tesla up here is up 124%. So you are able to compare whether it's the S&P 500, whether it's the Dow Jones, and you can change the color of the Dow Jones by clicking on this box here and then go into like orange. 
So now you can see that the Dow Jones is down here 13 percent. And it's cool because it gives you an idea of how the stock is performing. And you don't have to use this just for stocks. Let's say we were looking at SCHD, which is a dividend ETF. Now, this would be more realistic to compare against the S&P 500, in my opinion. So, because SEHD is a dividend ETF, I'll post that video. I made a video on SEHD in the past, but you can compare its performance, seeing it on a chart compared to the S&P 500. So, as you can see, this black line is what's representing the S&P 500, which you can see highlighted over here, SPX right here, while SEHD is technically down 16%. So, this is just what I want you to be able to notice when you're using Trading Dashboard. There's a lot of tools that you can use at your disposal that you just might not be aware of. Next, we're going to go over indicators. We're going to go over just three of them just to make it easy. You can do what's called VWAP, volume, weighted, adjusted price. You can change the color of it. You can change the standard deviation of it, and then you can apply it. Now, keep in mind your VWAP, normally using it for like the one day chart, which would be highlighted by this red line. To make things a little easier, I'm going to X out, and that's why I like Trading Dashboard. If I want to get rid of something, you just hover over it. Like if you do any indicator and you, you, you put it in here, it's going to highlight on this left side here. So you can easily get rid of it by just hitting the X button over here. Next, we're going to put on RSI, because everybody seems to know what RSI is. And I have another video on that. I'll post that at the end of the video as well. So here's RSI showing on the bottom now. So now you can see what, I'm gonna bring up a stock just so it's a little easier for all of us to see. Let's bring up Tesla again. Let's look at Tesla RSI on this, on this stock right now. So if we bring it up on the, the last three months, you can see that the RSI on the bottom here, and I'm zooming in here, is 80. So 80 RSI at 422. Now, next, if you wanna do another indicator, and you just want to see what else is out there, you can scroll through here and they offer so many different ones. So let's say like you really enjoy the Bollinger Bands. You can click on the Bollinger Bands. You can change your settings to what you want it to be and hit apply. And now you can see the Bollinger Bands that is trading within as well if this is something that you like. So as you can see, just with all of these features, I've already added the blurb here to write to buy more shares less than 360. I put on the Bollinger Bands here. I have VWAP right here. And I even drew out a trend, trend, trend channel. Now let's say I want to get rid of them. Just go over here. See the little X right here. Click the X. Bollinger Bands are gone. Want to get rid of the VWAP. Click the X. That's gone. If I want to get rid of this. Just click on it and exit out with the delete button. And it is gone. This is the rectangle we made. Just click it. So as you can see, it's very easy. If you, if you put something on the screen, it doesn't mean it has to stay. You can easily clear it up. And that's what I definitely enjoy about this. So now let's quickly review setting alerts and buying and selling. So let's say you have Tesla, you wanna set an alert for it. You're looking at the five day chart, right? So we got the five day chart up and you think to yourself, okay, at 400, I wanna set an alert, but I want it to send me an alert so I know. I don't have to watch it all day. Click on this little bell right on top and then you'll see this, this alerts tab come up. Next, what you're gonna do, I already have one where it's alert for crosses 52 week high. You can add the alert here, type of an alert, and you can either do price movement, percent movement, crosses 52 week high or low, exponential moving average. So let's say we did price movement. Now what you can do is if it moves above 423, let's say, it'll make an alert for me. If it falls below 400, it'll alert for me. Then you click save. Now you will have an alert that will send you a message if you set them like that. All right, so the next tab here is buying and selling. You will see that once you click buy or sell, the screen will change to this. It'll show your account, it'll show your number, how much cash you have available to trade. And now here, you'll see Tesla up here actively showing that it's current market price. Whether you want to buy or sell, all you have to do is click on action right here and hit buy or sell. Next, you're going to go under quantity and let's do one share. And then you can type in the order type, which is either going to be a market, limit, conditional, stop loss, stop limit, and the list goes on. If you want to do a market buy, you just click right there and then you hit the time and then preview order. Let's say you wanted to do a limit order. You click limit, and then you type in, I want to buy this at four, $421. Do 
So that means that if you were to buy it, it would not fill the order until Tesla goes below $421 and there is a bidder buying it. So the next thing I want to show you is if you have your chart open, right? So the chart is open. We're going to put the one year up. Now, if you click on table right here, click on table, you can change the time frame. So it says December 12th to December 12th. We're going to make this December 1st. And I'm going to show you why. So now you go to December 1st to December 12th. It's been 12 trading days. You can change the time frame to frequency of daily, weekly, monthly, etc. I'm going to keep it on daily for these purposes. And now you will see you have December 12th, the 11th, the 10th, the 9th, the 6th, and every business trading day is available. So let's say you're interested in a stock and you're wondering about the volume. You can see the overall volume that was traded. So now you can look and see, is there more action than normal? So you can basically look through, and as we scroll down here, you can see there was big volume in November. So you can check the volume on the day on which stock that you like. So for Tesla, as you can see on the 11th, there was a ton of volume on November 11th, 210, 210 million shares were traded. And you can look at the previous low and high, and this is around $336 a share. So it is interesting, you can kind of correlate a little bit going moving forward with that. You can see the open, of the stock price, the high of the price, the low of day, and what it closed at. So I think that's something definitely very useful. And you can look at the RSI as well on this, which they provide automatically. All right, so now that we reviewed the chart, let's go to option chain and option statistics. First thing we're gonna look at is option statistics. So if you click on any stock, it'll give you option statistics on it. So here we go, we have Tesla. You can look at the trade breakdown. It'll show you what the ratio is of today's total volume of what each individual is doing. So you can see that there is more call options than puts on Tesla today. If you look at the volatility indexes, you can see the percentile of the implied volatility as well. And we'll have to make a more detailed video on this. But what I like showing is under option statistics is you can see that today's top biggest 20est, uh, sorry, top 20 biggest trades. So as you can see here, it'll show you the condition where it's auto execution, the implied volatility, the bid and the ask, and it'll show the option expiration, which I think is important. So you can view and see who are the whales and who is doing these trades. So this gives you a good indication that right now, people are very bullish on Tesla. You can see that the ratio is 1.55 to one ratio of call to puts. And you can see the average volume of calls to puts, where it's a 1.63 ratio to one. Next, let's go under option chain. And I'm gonna make a detailed video on this at the end of this. So we're not gonna go into super detail, but option detail, you can do your calls, you can do your puts, you can do cash covered puts, two legs, buy rights, collars, combos, spreads, straddles. There's a lot of stuff you can do in here. Most people just do calls and puts. The real pros do much more, but you can do a few things here that I just wanna show you. You can change the strike price just by clicking on this, five, 10, 20, or you can do all. So I'm gonna click 20 just so you can see it branch out a little bit more. And all that's really saying is, is you're changing the strike price right here from 400 to 402 to 405. It's gonna give us all the way to 420. If I were to change this to say, let's just say 420 to 380, let's say, let's apply it. And now you get a good range of options from 380 all the way to 420 in the call options, calls and puts. If you just want to see calls because you're bullish on this, just make your life easier. Option strategy calls. It's only going to show you call options for this as well. If you only want to do puts, click on puts over here. And now you only have options for that. I'm going to leave this on calls and puts for now. And what I like to show you, is shows you weekly expirations. If you're not that risky of a trader, just click that off. It'll automatically take that off. It's the December 12th of this, this um, trading day. So if you click it off, it's not gonna give you weekly expirations where you most likely will lose money. So now if we leave it on, you can click on the dates and highlight them. See how I'm unhighlighting them? So now the only options I'm looking at, I just unlighted, unhighlighted everything except January 3rd. And you can see, that I am doing strike price just within 10, calls and puts, which you can see calls right here on the left side, puts right here on the right side. 
and it's all January 3rd expiration, which you can see right here, January 3rd expires in 22 days. So I think that is very nice that it lays out a nice format for you if you're going to trade options. I'll make a video on this in more detail and I'll put it under the Fidelity uh, playlist under my channel. All right, guys, thanks for checking out the channel. I appreciate you watching the video. There's always more on this channel. I have many playlists. Check out my Twitter. I post some videos on TikTok. What I want to show you, though, is real quick, if you're looking for more of those types of videos, go under my playlist, click under Fidelity, Index Funds and ETFs, click View Playlist, and then you will have this list here that shows all Fidelity related content, whether it's growth funds, small cap funds, how to reinvest dividends, semiconductors, how to automatically invest, financial ETFs, healthcare ETFs, utility ETFs, dividend ETFs. As you can see, the list goes on and on. So definitely be sure to check this out a lot for you guys. Appreciate you tuning into the channel. Leave a comment in the section below if you use trading dashboard. I'd really like to hear from you guys.